Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. This video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, and I'm playing with this Shino Bird Blue Eyes deck yet again, just to gather more results, do more things on camera for it, basically have like just a little bit better of an interaction, hopefully, than I did in the last game, because that last game was weird. Uh, my fears of decks not performing when I put them on camera, even though they work very well in testing and in theory, has definitely been something that is uh, that has plagued me from time to time on my channel, and it was no stranger in the last video to show its face. Uh, but <laughs> still, I haven't changed the list at all simply because we're doing this out of uh, out of principle just to gather more results. I may play this deck again in the future, and I may do the thing that I suggested in the previous video, which is cut the sages, trim down one of the ancient white stones, cut the veilers, and then play just a good you know suite of six or so different uh, you know uh, what's the word for those spirit monsters those to allow me to. Uh, have better access into these on a on an easier basis. Uh, maybe beef up on how many callings are being played, stuff like that. Uh, there's definitely some changes that can be made to the deck, but I'm not doing any of those for this video because I'm just doing these uploads in the same day. So I want the deck to be as close as it can be to its previous video counterpart, unless there was like a glaring problem. Which honestly, the only problem I had in the last video was I didn't draw a starter card until incredibly late in the game. Uh, but then when I drew that starter card, it was amazing. So, like, the deck functioned well on its blue eyes uh, axis that it needed to function on to pressure the opponent and allow me to win the game. Uh, so, things like that just uh, come into play there uh, from time to time. But, uh, so I'm not going to waste any more time talking about this. I talked enough about it in the previous video. Uh, we could definitely change the list around, but I'm going to do that for a different set of videos for a different uploading day, uh, if that ends up being the case. But... Like I said, let's not waste any more time and let's just jump straight into the game and see how this deck performs on this one. Hopefully we get some better starting hands and better starter cards for this one. Because there's, you you can see there's a lot of them. But anyway, let's not waste any more time for like the third time that I've said that. Alright, so we're going to try and have this happen again, but in a way where I actually utilize the Shino Bird Rituals this time. <laughs> please, please, we gotta. I don't want this to... Alright, well, we're starting off strong. We got... A starter card in the form of the trade-in. I don't really want to get rid of the alternative dragon as far as a trade-in is concerned. Uh, okay, Dark Lord cards. I've got a Veiler again. I should probably just cut these fucking Veilers. Uh, Veiler, cutting Veiler and then cutting Sage and putting in things like Aratama, Nikitamas, or just like Nikitam, Aratamas plus Cranes um, seems like it's a, a solid option. That's a pretty fucking good starter card. Oh shit. Because uh, what I can do is I can summon this use its effect to search for the white stone of legend and then I can cards of consonants it away get my blue eyes then trade in that after I summon my alternative dragon hopefully I just dig myself into uh, into pre-prep hey we we got there all right okay so now what we've got access to here is the blue eyes is here I can pre-prep um, I can gospel revival at some point uh, so there's that as well. Uh, so we'll pre-prep here. We'll get the the Shino Baron, the one that spins monsters, and the uh, and the Shino Bird's calling. Uh, basically, you just use these cards in conjunction with your blue eyes shit just to clear the way. They also just happen to be level eight, so you can use them for like trade in. Like if you have multiples, like if I had another one of the rituals in my hand at this point, I could trade in one of those away and then calling to banish that ritual from grave to summon the one from hand. Like, it's it's super duper value based uh, as far as how this goes. But, uh, but so what I'm gonna end up doing here is I'm going to summon this. Yes. Yeah. I'm gonna summon this by revealing the blue eyes uh, to special the alternative out of my hand. But like I said, cutting the sage and uh, the cards of consonants and the veilers and maybe trimming down on the White Stone of Ancients and stuff like that and just implementing a bigger spirit engine and then having the Blue Eyes engine itself being self-sustained by like Melody and stuff like that is definitely a possibility. Um, I've said that in previous videos, or I guess I should say previous video. Uh, the one. <laughs> the one. The only. Um, but so I'll discard this Blue Eyes to summon this. This will activate spinning his monster to hand. And are we gonna are we gonna have a really short video? Just a really quick OTK? Is that what we're doing here? I mean, uh, I've seen Dark Lord cards, and he just set a monster, uh, so I have no idea what he's actually playing in the essence of uh, in the essence of reality. Uh, but these can attack on Gospel Revival, and that would just be like straight game. 
Um, or I could just make this a little bit more interesting. Because this is game on board right now, right? Uh, with these three. Because this is 3k, 3k, and 3k. So that's 9,000. Realistically, that's, that's just game. But, uh, I can make... A, uh, I can make a Dark Matter, which can send cards, make the trade in live, uh, and then also just be generically pretty damn good. Um, so, I mean, we might, I mean, I've got the Veiler backing me up, so yeah, we're just going to explore playlines uh, rather than just going straight for game, uh, which seems a bit strange at first glance, but overall it's probably just fine, um, because if I draw into any form of revival spell or anything like that off of the trade-in that I'm just going to try and be resolving. Or uh, or even another copy of Sage, because then I could just discard Sage uh, to make this Sage bigger um, into another uh, Blue Eyes card out of my deck. Like, there's, there's all these possibilities for what is uh, actually capable of being done. Uh, but so we'll go into Dark Matter here just straight. I'm not going to waste the full armor because of the fact that I do have another copy of Cypher Dragon in the extra deck. I've got two of those. Uh, I've already selected the material for the XC summon, so I'm wondering why it's taking so long to actually register it. Uh, and it's kind of irritating me, to be completely honest with you. Come on! There we go. Uh, it just took its sweet-ass time, and I've been having this becoming an issue more and more as of lately. Uh, and it's not something that I'm pleased by, to say the least. Uh, but so we'll send this, we'll send Dragon Spirit to white, and then we'll send a regular blue eyes as well. And uh, so what that will allow is that will allow, after he banishes his stuff, so that I gain more information about the deck he's playing. I feel like he's playing his weird uh, Burning Abyss Dark Lord uh, variant. I feel like that's what he's playing, because it's Iradium. Like, this is historically whatever he plays whenever he plays Dark Lord cards. Whenever I see Dark Lord cards, I can usually expect there to be some Burning Abyss cards and maybe some Zodiac cards in tow alongside of it. Uh, but so what I'm going to do is I'm going to banish that Ancient Stone from Grave to add back the Blue Eyes, trade in it back to Grave, and try to just draw into uh, good cards. So what did he actually banish? He banished a Farfa and two Elasters. Yeah, so he's playing the Invoked Burning Abyss Dark Lord deck that uh, that I know all so well at this point because of how many times that I've seen him play it. Uh, but it's it's a really powerful deck when it goes off because it's got all these good engines. That's Twin Twister and that's another one of these. Uh, so Twin Twister is nice as well in terms of what it allows me to do. Uh, but so I'm just going to attack with these. Uh, I gave up my game shot for the extended play just one to make the video a bit longer because we were literally only at like two minutes and I had of gameplay and I had game on board uh, so I kind of want to give him a little bit of a, of a shot uh, but I also want to just establish uh, establish some things I also just want to do that so we're gonna summon the spirit dragon in defense mode I've got uh, the return of the dragon lords in the grave I've got a Valor in hand and I've got a twin twister uh, which means this twin twister can realistically hit three things because I've still got a, um, a Dragon Spirit of White in my deck. So Twin Twister could realistically discard the Ancient uh, White Stone and then allow uh, allow stuff to happen. Uh, what is this? This is uh, discarding Superbia. I'm going to go ahead and activate this uh, just straight away uh, here. Even though Gospel Revival is there in uh, protecting things, uh, I would just rather go ahead and do this just so I have that blanket protection from targeting um, specifically. Because the Return of the Dragon Lords protects from half of what Azur Eyes would protect for, but the non-targeting thing is a huge is a huge thing that I would like to prevent my opponent from doing to me. But Valor can happen. Okay, so he's kaijuing over my Dark Matter, which is fine. I'm I'm okay with that. The Dark Matter can go. We we were never worried about that. And see, so that was really good that I actually went ahead and did that <gasps> that, uh, that spirit play. Because if not, then he would have just 100% have uh, have put the uh, the kaiju over the spirit dragon, I believe, because dark matter is essentially just a big vanilla at that point. Uh, but now, with this on the board being here already, there's no reason for him not to uh, to uh, kaiju over this, just because. But so if he like us here, uh, uh, and into tiger mortar, and so basically, I don't know if I even want to worry about negating any of this because he's just gonna summon Dryden. <laughs> That's all that's gonna happen. Uh, yeah, you can get the rep here. I'm not too worried about that. Uh, I've got the Twin Twister, so back row isn't a problem. Uh, this has a static protection from the Dryden until the end of my next turn. Uh, as well as Return of the Dragon Lords is gonna protect 
myself from all of the stuff that he's going to be able to do with said Dryden's. I don't want him to get a Bullhorn search here, uh, so I will Valor this. Uh, Valor is incredibly weak in this situation, but I'm definitely going to Valor this Bullhorn uh, because him not being able to search another card like Whiptail is a huge. Because Whiptail is what outs this card right now. <laughs> we, we were never trying to deal with that. We were never trying to let that just happen because he would... Uh, he would be able to potentially stack up some, like, things. I mean, it would still just be suicide uh, for him to do the uh, the Dryden with a Whiptail under attack, just Whiptail, because he would take 1,600. But if he has access into anything else, uh, like another Whiptail in hand or something, then it becomes, uh, it becomes an issue. That was a pretty late Max C draw, if I do say so myself. But I've got this tuner in my hand now. Uh, which means that once this brings back my card, then I'm going to be able to just bring back my uh, blue eyes, turn them both to attack mode. Um, I'm sure you can pop your rap here, or your Dryden't. <laughs> this thing's static protection. This thing has protection till the end of the next turn from the turn it was summoned. So that carries over to my own turn. So he's just popping the Dryden. <laughs> Alright, that's fair. Um, but I mean, realistically, this entire play string doesn't matter because I had game on board the previous turn, but I just wanted to do some cool plays. I, 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 didn't, I didn't want to respect the game shot uh, <laughs> in a way that needed to be done. Uh, I just wanted to do it, uh, I just wanted to do, uh, do, uh, do stuff. You misread that? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's how that works. Dryden was in no way outing my board, plus because I have the Return of the Dragon Lords engraved. Um, there was no way that Dryden was outing my board in any way, shape, or form. Uh, and that's just one of the safest feelings that you have when you're playing this Blue Eyes deck. But yeah, so I got to summon the Shino Bird thing, spin his card back to his hand, and generate an OCK push from there. Uh, but then I just decided to just go down some different play lines, show you a little bit more of play that could be done so that things could, you know, be more fleshed out into a regular video. So before anyone says, eh, you had a game shot, why didn't you do it? Listen. I acknowledged I had the game shot, I just specifically didn't want to do it, because I didn't want the video to be super short. But, at this point, I'm okay with that. And I, I completely expect people to just go, Oh, you didn't you didn't take the game shot when you had game on board at X time X minute. Yee, look at me, I don't watch to the end of the videos and listen to when you say, Hey, I have this as an option, but I'm just going to do this instead, okay guys? Like, like goddamn. <laughs> Some people just do not listen because they will comment things that I literally say something about in the video. They're like, you didn't do this. It's like, yeah, I said at that point that I'm not doing this because of X reason or because I do not wish to do so or because I want to expand upon the game state. Stuff like that. But <laughs> anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching and let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Be sure to like and subscribe and check out the links in the description to my Facebook and Patreon pages. If you want to help support me directly, then Patreon is the best way to do so. It also gets you access into a monthly raffle giveaway at the end of each month, so definitely check out the details of that over on Patreon itself. At the end of this month, I'm giving away a box of Maximum Crisis. First week of May, when it hits stores, I will be acquiring a box and I will be giving it away to the people that have supported me throughout the month of April on Patreon, just as a little way to have a fun little thank you for the people that are doing that. So, if you're interested, go check out Patreon, as well as if you want access into my personal Discord server, where me and 15 other people at this point are just chatting about random nonsense, and then we play games for these, uh, for these videos for the channel, then if you want to be interested in that, then go check out the Patreon reward tiers for it. But, if you're looking to buy or sell cards while also indirectly supporting the channel, then be sure to check out Second Chance Gaming's website, which is also linked in the description. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, and I'm a big fan of how they do business with what I've dealt with thus far, both shipping and pricing-wise. But definitely check out their site and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But other than that, that is it for this video. Again, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time, and as usual, guys, take care. I will see you in the next video.